It's time to start looking at managing products in Lightspeed Onsite for e-commerce purposes. Now I'm already logged into my Lightspeed Onsite and I already have a lot of products that we can use today as examples. Before we even start talking about products, there are some fundamentals you need to know. The first thing that you need to know is you have to be running a 2018 version or further for the integration to work between the two systems. Are you not too sure what version you're running? Log into your Lightspeed Onsite at the top left next to the little apple Click on Lightspeed and then About Lightspeed. You'll have your client ID as well as your version number in there. If you need to get updated to a later version and you're not too sure how to update, you just give us a call. Our tech support is open 24-7 and can help you with the upgrade. The second thing that's really important to know is how do I turn on the integration? Now if you're running a 2018 version or further, you can then click on Tools and then you'll see e-commerce about in the middle of this drop-down. Let's open that up. Now it's thanks to this connector that the two systems speak to one another. This isn't a tool that you're gonna open on a regular basis. This is something that I'm gonna explain, you're gonna choose your product mapping, you're gonna turn it on, and you're never gonna touch this tool again. Now whatever you do in here is not set in stone. It can be changed, but it's not something that we like to see done often. Since this tool works on your server, this is not a tool that should be turned on and off and on and off to do tests. This should be only turned off once every 48 hours, and that is only if you need to make a change to your product mapping. Now that all that's been said, let's talk about the fields of information and where they can push to. Before I open up a product and use it as my example today, what are these four fields? Title versus full title. A title is going to be the name of your product online. If I click on that thumbnail, which is the title, I would then go to the full page of the product and the full title would be the name of the product but on the full page. Most of the time I don't see people differentiating between the two. The title is commonly the same thing as the full title, but if you need to make a difference between the two, you can use any one of these fields. These are the four fields that we have the ability to use to push over to the e-commerce if we'd like to keep our data very separate from our point of sale data. Some people have descriptions that work for online purposes, so some people don't even need to add anything else to their products. They'll simply use their product description for online purposes. Now I'm going to show you all of these fields, but before we jump into that product, we now know title and full title. Description is something that can affect your SEO, and it's also a field that is not the additional content. The description is something short, sweet, and to the point usually one, two, or three sentences describing the product and what it's good for. Short description. Below we have content, which we commonly see our customers deciding to manage the additional content of their products on the e-commerce because of the easy to use tools and you don't need to know any HTML to start embedding videos, embedding photos, putting numbered lists, or even bullet point lists. That's what content is for. That's the additional content for your product. If you've ever been shopping around online just to gather some product information before you purchase, this is the type of information and this is where you would put it. Content allows you to look at, for example, where is it made, what is it made out of, is it fair trade, what's the recipe, what's the ingredients, etc. All that extra content that you'd want to see when shopping around and doing some research on products. Now the four fields that you have available to select for these four drop downs are the product code, which is not used very often, product description, the web short description, and the web long description. Now what I'm going to do today is open up a random product and talk about this mapping. I'm going to bring my tool right over here. I'm going to lose it in the background, but I'll bring it back up when we need it. I click on the main interface. And now what I'm going to do is look at my stairs. Let's open up my stairs. Okay. Now in my system, since this is my own system and I do tests with it, I have very straightforward product codes, descriptions, and other content. Product code is here, description is here, and if you want to see the web short and the web long, you have to move over to the web tab within a product card, like that. Web short and web long. Let's bring back up that box for a second. There we go. So now, if I left this mapping the way it was and I turned this on, that means that 
Web short description would be the name of my product online, which would be in this case stairs. The description would be pulled from description right up here, which I don't have to do. If I'd like to, I could make this drop down the web short description, and maybe I can put in my sentences in here and keep the description to be the name of my product. So let's switch these two drop downs product description, product description. My web short description would be my two to three sentences describing the product. Okay. And then if I wanted to, I could use the web long field to be my additional content and manage everything that has to do with my products in my point of sale. If you think that you're going to have some more interesting additional content that isn't just straight text, then I would probably recommend that you manage the additional content as ignore and manage it in the e-commerce. That's something that you're going to see in our managing products on the e-commerce side video. Now that we know about these drop downs, let's also look at the other fields of information that get carried over. So I'm going to go back to the info section. Depending on your product mapping over here, I can't exactly tell you what field of information is going to carry over where because you have the opportunity to choose that for yourself. So that being said, what are the fields that automatically get carried over? Number one, the family gets carried over as the name brand of your products. So that gets carried over. The sell price down here gets carried over. And so does the supplier, technically speaking, but it doesn't serve much purpose over there on the e-commerce. Now for this selling price right here, I'm now going to pop over to the web field, like that. The web price over here, if this box is checked off and you're listing a price that is lower than the price listed under the info tab selling price, then you're going to get a bar going through the 15 and showcasing your lower web price as an on-sale product. If you'd also like to sell your products at a higher price than what you sell it for in the store, simply check off the box and list a price that is higher than the regular sell under the Info tab. Another field that gets managed in the point of sale are photos. So let's click on this photo box right down here. There's the photo of my stairs. This is going to get carried over to my e-commerce. We recommend managing your photos directly in the point of sale and not in the e-commerce for Lightspeed Onsite. Keep that in mind. You can have up to 12 photos per product. If you need to add a new photo, or if you haven't added any, you can drag and drop in this field above. If you already have one, click on New, and then you can drag and drop a new photo in this white field. The web categories are also very important to set up in the point of sale. This isn't something that you have to manage in your point of sale. As you can see in my connector over here, I have manage categories and on-site which can be selected or deselected using this check mark. I personally always encourage my customers to manage their web categories directly in their point of sale. Where do I create these web categories you might ask? I can't create them on the spot, as you can see. Tools, set up at the bottom, go to the web selling section, and then open up web categories. This is where you can create your primary, secondary, and tertiary categories. On the e-commerce, you can't get any deeper than three layers when it comes to your category structure. So try to make a nice, clear, and concise category structure. Just a little bit more on how to create categories. If I click on testing accessories, I can see under testing accessories, I have four sub categories. And if I needed to, I could create a tertiary category within one of these four. I could click on gun, and then I would have to click the plus down here under tertiary. That would change this name. I type it in, I hit save, and that means that blue was now created within gun, and gun is within testing accessories. Let's close that up. My web categories have been selected and added to products. Keywords do not carry over and do not do anything for the moment, so you can completely ignore keywords. We talked about web short and web long. It's up to you how you want that product mapping 
to be handled over here. And then down below, I have the weights and dimensions. This is also carried over to the e-commerce. And depending on what type of shipping workflow you're going to be using, you might not need to enter weights. But again, depending on the workflow, you might need to enter weights and or dimensions. Now that we've talked about the fields of information that carry over, the categories, the things that don't get carried over, and the pricing, as well as photos, the last and most important thing you need to know about is the Sell Online button. Now it's thanks to this check mark that it takes my product information, everything we had just talked about and explained, and pushes it over to the e-commerce. Now if we're talking about a matrix, we want to check off the master as well as any of the children. That way, the whole ensemble of that matrix will show up on the e-commerce and it'll show up as one thumbnail and when I click on the thumbnail and go to the full page, I get drop downs for color and size. That's the purpose of a matrix on the e-commerce. Now that I'm done with my stairs, I'd like to talk a little bit more about this check off sell online box. I don't expect you to open up each one of your products one by one, check off the box, hit save, and move on to the next one. There's a quicker way. You need to find a common thread with these products in order to get changes made. So in this example, I'm going to close this box. I'm not going to save my changes in this case. I'm going to close this box as well. And now I'm going to find a matrix in my product list. So let's scroll down. All right, so I've got some t-shirts right down here. And I'm going to use this matrix today as my example. I'm going to open up the master. And I'd like to get this check mark under the web field checked off for not only the master, but all of the children. So how would I do that in a faster way? Now under tools, I have set product info. This is a very practical tool to use to make changes, but I'd like to emphasize also that this tool can be a little dangerous. You can make changes and then not be able to take that change back. So if you have even a little smidge of doubt about the change you're about to make, please run a backup in your system to protect yourself from any mistakes that could happen. How do you backup? Tools, Utilities, and Backup Database. If something does go wrong, we can just take a step back in time and restore that backup. So for my master, I need to find a common thread between the master and all of the children so that I can make a change to this batch of products. I'm going to take my product code and copy it. And in my set product info, I'm now going to use this tool to make a change to the master as well as all of its children. Now, how does the tool work? There's the criteria box at the top and the action box below. So criteria, you have up to four filters to find the group of products that you'd like to make a change to. And then action is what do I want to do to the products that I've found? In this case, my product code begins with t-shirt. So I type that in and I've got 17 product results. Now maybe I need to find some other identifier to help me filter out all the other products that I don't want to make a change to and just the group that I want to make a change to. You can use any one of these fields to make your changes. Now I've found the 17 products that I want to make a change to. I don't see them. If you'd like to absolutely see the products that you're going to make a change to, repeat your filter searches in a smart find over here to see those 17 products. Now what do I want to do to these 17 products? I'd like to get the web box checked off on all of them. So I say I want to set the web to checked, apply, are you sure you want to make this change? I'm very sure. Thank you. Click OK again. It's made the change. And now all of those 17 products have this check mark on them, which means they're now going to start pushing over to the e-commerce if your e-commerce tool has been activated. You can also do other things using set product info. For example, I'd like to set the web categories for these 17 products. The web categories are going to be testing accessories, Robot and miscellaneous. So miscellaneous robot t-shirts. Let's apply these changes. Click OK. 
Click OK again. And now I'm going to close this box. Since my product card was already opened, I'm not seeing the web categories assigned, so let's close the product and reopen it. Let's head over to the web field. And now my web categories are assigned. So Set Product Info can help you save a lot of time when it comes to managing information in your point of sale. That's it for products and on-site today.